Welcome to the Innovation Meets Leadership Podcast. Real inspiration for real innovators. If you're looking for innovation and leadership transformation, your journey starts now. Welcome to the Innovation Meets Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Bourne. What's up, innovators? I want to remind you of a special feature that we have as part of season three. That's right. We are now on YouTube. So in addition to listening to this podcast on your normal platforms, head over to YouTube, hit subscribe, especially for this episode today, because we may even have some cool features going on in the background. Well, today I want to introduce you to my guest, Michael Sahota. Michael is the founder and CEO of Shift314. It's a bespoke leadership training and consulting organization that specializes in organizational culture and leadership shifts that are needed to unlock success in agile, in digital, in lean, and the list goes on. And his new book was just released in 2021. And it's a really cool book that I think you guys are going to want to check out, especially after our conversation today. It's called Leading Beyond Change. Welcome to the podcast, Michael. Thanks so much for having me here. Well, I want to talk a little bit about this book. It's a really interesting book. One of the things that I really loved is all the frameworks, all the visuals that you have in the book. Can you talk a little bit about why the need for this book? Because as I got into it, you've done so much research and provided so many frameworks for people in the kind of the digital and agile space. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Well, essentially what, what the whole book is about is about how do we go on a journey from a traditional organization to an evolutionary one? And when I say traditional, everybody knows what that means. It means like running as business as usual, you know, command and control bosses, people who are disengaged, unmotivated, you know, mixed levels of productivity, mixed levels of results, difficulties adapting the changing world, difficulties keeping up with customer needs and so on. And really kind of the, you know, the holy grail is, well, how do we create a place where our workers are engaged, that they show up with fire in their belly, they're passionate, that we create great customer outcomes, that we have this growing business, not like one in, in stagnation where, you know, keeping up with the adapt, adapting needs of the market is just, is just fun. It's just kind of how we do things. Innovation is just part of everything we do because we're no longer kind of centralizing innovation in some way. Innovation is just part of getting our job done. Of course, we're going to unlock the creative potential of every human being and through that uh, create, you know, just extraordinary uh, at an individual outcome level, but also an organization level. So that's really this journey that we're talking to about and it's really about having organizations wake up and say, well, wait a second, we are somewhere on our journey. And what is our rate of progress on this journey anyway? How do you help organizations understand where they fit? I can imagine a lot of organization people who run organizations who will listen to this podcast will be thinking, well, where am I on the continuum, especially compared to other organizations? I mean, none of us want to be last. Um, you know, so, so that's really important, right? That we're not stuck in those traditional mindsets, but sometimes we can be somewhere in between. Yeah. So, I mean, what I see is that most traditional organizations benchmark themselves against other traditional organizations to say, Hey, we're not doing so bad. Right. And, uh, okay, well, I mean, let's just face it, like 80% of businesses, maybe 90% are traditional. Mm -hmm. So if you're benchmarking yourself against other people who are not performing very well and you're doing okay, well, that just means you suck. Like, like let's just be frank here. So the, the question is, well, do you have energized, motivated people? Mm-hmm. Are you knocking it out of the park in terms of customer outcomes? You know, do you have ongoing growth year after year and, and new products being generated? Like, that's really the question. And most organizations are not in that situation. Most people are in like, you know, fighting the fight to kind of just get products out and meet deadlines and just getting caught up in the machinery of, you know, the daily grind of business. And it's not fun anymore. Wow. That's, you know, you said something there. It's not fun anymore. And I think that is the problem that all organizations have to fight against. The fact that it's not fun when you are doing some of those things you listed, like hitting, trying to hit those deadlines, doing the daily grind, waking up, kind of with that with that book on your chest, right? Because you're like, oh my God, what do I have to do today? And, and it's that pressure that kind of gets behind you and push versus you saying, I'm motivated, I'm excited to be here and I, and I want to do the work. So you have some tools that kind of help us with this and, and how we can think about this. And I love your framework because you kind of look at it as um, not only tools and tactics and models, but also culture 
and leadership. And so all of these things kind of converge into the framework that you've created. Can you talk a little bit about how this framework could help organizations who or people who are leading in organizations at the highest levels? Yeah, yeah. That's a really, really great question. And I, I think probably the most important thing is understand is that the very first shift the leader needs to do is to say, well, wait a second, am I focused on production, hitting my quarterly numbers, getting things done today, or am I focused on the future, the production capacity or the production capability of the system? And, and really the job of leaders is to look after the system so it can perform better. Now, if we look at why is this such a problem, it's because people have things called an MBA. This is kind of the gold standard, Masters of Business Administration. Yeah. But wait a second, your organization is filled with people. What you actually need to succeed is a master's of business leadership. Mm. You know how to lead your people, create a great environment for them, have them lit up so they can create the results. Now, that's where we say like, and this is the core of the, the model for those of you who are actually watching behind me. The core of the model is actually that we're un, not only understanding what our organizational DNA is, but knowing as a leader, how do I evolve this? How do I evolve this? And this is like the tagline for our, our self, it's called the self framework, shift 314 evolutionary leadership framework. The tagline for it is scaling excellence with people. So if you're interested in making your organization function better, how do you do that with your people, not to your people, mm. not fixing them because they're not broken. You as a leader have just created an environment where they're demotivated. It's your fault. Like you're, yeah, whether you're aware of it, uh, and so what this book does, what this framework does is help us become aware of the damage we're causing mm -hmm. as a leader, how we're stuck in this paradigm of business as usual and give us the patterns of like, oh, wait, these are the different dimensions of organizational functioning. And this is unhealthy. This is healthy. How can I start to make that shift? And so the framework is, is really kind of an unchanged framework. It's not about trying to have a transformation program. It's how to create change without a transformation program, how to create change as part of daily work. Because when change is part of daily work, your organization will be a different place in a year, in two years, in five years. So this whole notion of, oh, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck where we are. Now we need to do a big transformation program is, is actually part of the trap. This is a whole, we're talking about radically rewiring how we think about change to what will actually work, what will actually unlock the people. Wow. I mean, even as I hear you talk, I, I just, in my mind, I see this idea that we think we're doing something good by creating those change programs and those transformation programs. But we're actually creating more motion, more work, more uh, grind for the people that have to, um, that have to work underneath those systems. And so it's, it sounds like it's really stepping back from all that and asking ourselves some really important questions as a leader. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing, the truth of the matter is all those transformation programs are done with the same traditional mindset. They're done. They're actually huge acts of oppression. Yeah. Right. It's not like, hey, we want to go in this transformation program. It's totally optional. If you have time, energy, you can do it. If you don't focus on what's most important for our company to be. No. They're not optional. Yeah. They're mandated. They are massive acts of oppression. So we're going to try to make things better here. So our first step is we're going to oppress everyone and make them do this, even if it doesn't make sense for them right now, even if they have other things we've asked them to do that are conflicting. It, it's, 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 and we're trying to say, wake up, stop oppressing the people. It doesn't work. Instead, why don't we create it? We, we, instead, let's turn it around say, how can we as leaders create an environment where transformation, change, evolution will just be happening around us? What do you think sparks that understanding of how to do it in a non-traditional way. I know that your framework really leans into that, but what is there like a component in your framework that really challenges that? Because even as I hear you talking, I love it because you're 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 really railing against some very traditional systems that have been in place for a very long time. And you're saying, hey, we need to flip everything you've ever thought about on its head, flip the table, think about it differently get outside the box, do something different. What you're doing is not working. And we know it's not working. We feel that it's not working. And what you're introducing is really kind of, it's a little bit of a shock to the system, but I, but I love it. Um, what would you say when you look at your framework, what, what really hits this piece of it very, very specifically to get people to kind of wake up? Okay, so there are a lot of different ways to talk about it. I, so we're actually just talking about one topic for many, many different dimensions, from a leadership dimension, from a cultural dimension, from an employee engagement. Like we're just talking about the exact same topic 
just from different lenses. So there's only one topic, which is how is our organization functioning? How are we functioning as leaders? But the one I'll just focus on, uh, it's a very, it's an old metaphor. It's an old model uh, from the 60s from uh, McGregor. And it's called Theory X, Theory Y. And, and the idea is very simple. It's a very, very simple idea. And the idea is this, is, you know, are your people right now more like Theory X, where they're taken out of the game, they avoid responsibility, they're unmotivated, unambitious, you know, they're low energy, right? Or the people Theory Y, they're ambitious, they're excited, they take on responsibility, you know, you, know, you just need to you, you let them loose and they'll take care of everything. Think about how are your people in your organization? Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Is every single act you're taking as a leader shifting people from theory X to theory Y? Mm. And this is, it's a very simple idea because in what we get, do is help leaders see is like, well, wait a second. I'm actually, through this action, creating somebody, people who are more like theory X. Wait a minute. I, the whole rule book I'm following of traditional business is designed to create theory X workers. Yeah. Right? And it's like, I, and then it's scary because it's like, okay, it's true. I know what I'm doing sucks. I get it. I see the damage. And I see that there's a path over here to do something different that I get. It understand. I make, I know, how, I can see how it can work, but I don't know how to do that. And then there's this place of choice, which we call evolutionary leadership, which is an evolution of servant leadership and evolution of transformation leadership, which is the choice to evolve oneself. And that's really what it is, is from that place of seeing the truth. Does that leader say, yes, I want something different. I'm the problem. I'm the solution. I'm ready to evolve myself, to change how I show up. And I'm ready to change what I'm doing on a daily basis. And I don't know how to do it, but I'm willing to go on that journey. That one choice is the single thing that determines what will happen to that leader, what will happen to that organizational system. That's it, that one choice. And it, it's not like a one and done. It's a daily choice. What do I want to do today? Do I want to create more good in the world or do I want to create more destruction? And am I ready to go on my journey to evolve myself as a leader so I can help other people come on this journey? Wow. What I hear though is like, it, it really helps me because it's, it's very much, for lack of a better term, extreme ownership. It's you taking ownership of where you're at as a leader. And, and that's nice because um, I think what would be daunting is for a leader to hear, okay, do these 45 things and you'll change your organization. And that's another oppressive system. <laughs> but to say, hey, do these things and you'll change the way that you lead that's within each and every one of our control. We each have the ability to change the way we show up, to change the way we lead, and that feels doable. Yeah, so, so what, what happens when people come through our trainings, what happens when people understand the message of the book is there's an, a sense of extreme empowerment because what happens is all these unsolvable problems with employees, with the organizational system, which really are unsolvable, and we don't know how to solve them, become solvable because we realize, wait a second, the solution's inside of me. I hold the keys to the kingdom. I'm actually the one who can change to unlock the people around me, to unlock my organizational system. And it's about if I show up differently and I learn these new tools, these new patterns of interacting from an evolved perspective, I can create the shift I'm hoping for. So it's actually this moment of liberation to finally have the tools. And it's, it, and just to be clear, the tools that most of the tools that we see in the traditional, even the, even the progressive business world are wholly insufficient. People are talking things like emotional intelligence. They're talking about like be, be aware. And like these are very basic, basic tools. And what we've developed is a very advanced, sophisticated toolkit of helping leaders have a rapid evolution kit so they can rapidly evolve their their sort of inner state of being to get rid of those destructive behavior patterns to kick the command and control habit to show up with a higher level of psychological safety as a grounded present human being that can be there for the people around them and and support them on the journey and without kind of this inner shift of our being without the actual tools which you know the self framework gives us those practical tools and, and new patterns of interaction we can't really undertake this journey, right? We want to, but without the 
the technology of change, we can't actually go on the journey. What when you when you were crafting this uh, tool, who did you have in mind? So uh, I'll tell you the story. So this 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 thing we call the self framework was an emergent outcome. There was never an intention to create it. The, the, we, never in my mind did I have I'm going to create a framework. And uh, what happened is, I'll tell you my story. What happened is. Uh, I actually uh, was formally trained as an engineer. I went through this the, the hardest mathematics and science program in my my university. It was the the, the most elite program, um, and I went did a master's in computer science, half a PhD in artificial intelligence and robotics. I got published papers, and really I was brilliant. I was and am brilliant. But the problem is, um, really, I had all these unproductive behavior patterns. I had all these unprocessed emotional charges that were causing me to sabotage everything. Like I really, in my career, left a scorched trail, right? So I, I was amazing. I could see everything. I could get things done. I could deliver projects. But there was always a body count. Right. There was always harmed relationships. And so what I realized uh, as I was working with organizations as a consultant, helping with agile, lean, digital, and so on, is that, wait a second, the only way I can really help these organizations fully is if these leaders are more evolved. And I thought, well, how can I help these leaders? And I looked at myself in the mirror and I go, Michael, you are a well-intentioned asshole. The way you're showing up, there's no possible way. So the last 10 years plus, I've been on this incredible journey where instead of being the person you don't want anyone to talk to because they're going to cause damage, to the person who's trained thousands of leaders around the globe, consult with top companies on how do we show up as better leaders wow. and inspiring people through, because I've gone on my journey. So as a byproduct of my journey of just stuff, I created for me to be successful, for me to evolve at a personal level and help organizations evolve. What's, and it's not just my work. I'm, I'm co-authored this work with my, my wife, business partner, co-trainer, Audrey Tara Sahoda. And you know, my background's in sort of organizational systems. So on. her background's in human psychology, the energy system of the body, um, and, and so on. So it's actually a co-creation of kind of the, the masculine structure and the, the feminine consciousness energetic system of that we've co-created and come together to create this amazing thing that we call the self framework. Wow. That's really cool. And thank you for sharing your story. I think that a lot of people can relate to that the way, you know, in business, a lot of times you, you may feel like, Hey, the ends is going to justify the means and we have to get this done. And you're exactly right. There become, there's that body count <laughs> along the way to quote, get it done. And when you look back on the legacy of your leadership, sometimes you can look back at that and say, you know what? the ends did not justify the means. And the way that I had to treat people, right, had to, air quotes, in order to deliver X, Y, Z was not right. And it was not okay. It, it might be needed for the survival of the business, but then like, what's the consequence for, for moving people from more theory Y to more theory X? Yeah. And then the production, so you might get the production this quarter, this year, this project, but what's happening to your production capability? your ability to get more work, more projects done, it's gone down. Yeah, It's kind of like um, taking a reverse mortgage on your house. I mean, most people in organizations, leaders are running up incredible, you know, like uh, human debt, um, safety debt, listening debt on their, on their kind of leadership credit card. Yeah. And there's a huge interest rate on that, and the, but it's not visible. Like we don't have some magic spray we can spray to, to show exactly how each action they take is actually costing them in the long term. Wow. And that's, and that's really, I think, the key is that you may get those results in the short term, but what's the long term impact to your leadership, your legacy, and your business? And I think that, you know, while we may not realize those, those painful results in the short term, you absolutely will experience those results in the long term. And that's, that's the key. So I'd love to, um, cause we have a lot of listeners to that listen to this podcast that are in that agile lean, um, area. I would love for you to talk a little bit about this, this phrase that you've said, which is that basically people are the key to unlocking the benefits of agile and lean. And I feel like it's even safe, right? And I feel like we know that on the surface, but can you take us a little bit of a level deeper? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so really the most compact definition of agile that I'm aware of that actually makes sense is people over process. And it's actually in the first line of the manifesto, individuals and interactions over process and tools. And if you look deeply at lean, the core principle is this valuing human beings. 
all of lean does not make sense or completely falls apart unless you have that. Wow. And what that is, is actually a deep shift in consciousness, a deep shift in mindset, a deep shift in worldview of the leadership, right? And, and without that, agile doesn't work, lean doesn't work. These things do not, because we're talking about using these things to unlock people and organizations, right? So, so trying to approach things from a structural perspective is, is actually um, like a huge, huge trap. And, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, and we've checked this out all over the world, so anyone really interested in agile, lean, digital, and so on, uh, we checked this out all over the world, nobody wants agile. Yeah. I'm going to repeat this. Nobody, no leader, we checked this out with thousands of leaders around the globe, nobody wants agile. It turns out people want the benefits that may come through healthy use of agile. They want high performance, they want rapid delivery, they want adaptable, they want engaged people, et cetera, et cetera, higher throughput. They want high performance. Everybody around the world wants high performance. They want one thing. They may define it differently in different companies. Um, and when we, we realize that agile is just a means to an end, we look at the bigger picture we're talking about here. It's about the people, right? So, so most of what I see um, with agile transformation around the world, 80, 90% of it is actually running in traditional business as usual in an oppressive paradigm that creates disengaged workers and is the exact opposite of a people-centric approach. Most things actually have a transformation program, an agile rollout plan, which doesn't even follow the manifesto of respond to change instead of following a plan. It's just as blanket, we're going to blast agile across all of our people, put them on teams, and, and it's not voluntary, yeah. it's not inclusive, it's not respecting people. You know, it, it, it's just so anti-people approach, and people can do it in the name of agile only. But the truth is, it's not agile, because agile is putting people over process. It's just in the name of Agile. You know what? This is this is a huge frustration of mine and why I feel like Agile does not work in a lot of organizations is because they're trying to shove a very um, nonconformist idea into a very uh, high conformist uh, organization. And then and then everyone's shocked when when it takes on the look and feel of a traditional organization and then everyone hates it. And I think that's that is the crux and part of the challenge is that most people who've experienced agile haven't truly experienced agile. Well, well, they're so either they they know better or they're being they're falling into compliance because they don't know how to navigate because because basically the mindset of the leadership of these companies is still command and control, command and control and agile are the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. So it's impossible to actually introduce agile. Well, it's, you can do it. And this is, we have a whole technology of how to approach change in a healthy way, how to create adapters so that you can, under the radar, make healthy choices, treat people well, and so on, while still giving a presentation layer to senior management that you're pressing the people and you're making them do it and so on. So, there's, so and this is what we teach in our courses too, but right? it's possible to still do it. It just means you're creating little culture bubbles within the organization, which are people-centric, but knowing that you're not going to do it in the whole organization. And when, when people have that level of maturity and understanding of how agile can be used for good, how to actually take advantage of that kind of initiative, um, but it's, you're, it's going to run into problems no matter what, because the top level people don't understand that agile means you, that projects are uncertain. And you pick scope or date, but not both. And that fundamental, uh, no, no, we got to tell our people what to do until they, the leadership has that mindset shift. It's not going to go that far. Oh, so good. Okay. So uh, final thoughts for our listeners. I would love for you to throw a few thoughts out there at them, but I also want to ask you this question as well. Um, and that's if you were a futurist, command and control, we know it's going away. What do you see the future of organizations looking like? What, what kind of model are they moving to? Um, so I, I'll actually uh, I'll, I'll actually say uh, I don't see any evidence that command and control is going away. Um, what act that actually requires is that leaders start to evolve, and it's gonna actually maybe it's gonna fade away slowly as the new generation, which has less command and control in their system, uh, are slowly taking on roles of power. So I think it's a, a right now it's a generational rate uh, of change. So. That's probably what I'd say. So it's not really, I mean, fading away very, very slowly. And really our work is about how those leaders interested in making that accelerated change in that direction can, can make that, that shift. 
I'm sorry. So what's the question? Can you repeat yeah. the question? I so, don't think I answered it properly. No, that's great. So I so I love what you said there. You you see it trickling off slowly. And then I would just love to know as, you know, what final thoughts do you have for our listeners as they think about uh, your framework and how they can really um, get into this? So maybe tell them a little bit about how they can find this framework, find you and and find this book. Yeah. So the best place to go find our work is our website, shift314.com. And uh, really, you know, I guess my, my kind of closing message here is that change is possible. You've probably caused a lot of damage as a leader in your career, and you're innocent. Our view is that until now, you've had half measures, partial tools, you've been conditioned by society. So everyone is really pretty much innocent. If you want to move beyond your current stage of evolution, if you want to move into the extraordinary, if you want to create a place where really you can see true shift in what's happening, we're, we're, this is what the cell framework is for. It's how to understand the journey, how to orient on the journey, how to go on that journey. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I'll tell you what, this uh, interview has been so interesting to me to just really self-reflect and to pick up this uh, framework and to start to really look at it, understand it, and apply it. So thank you for your time today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me here. Well, you can follow Michael on LinkedIn as well. You can find him on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And to our listeners, thank you for joining the Innovation Meets Leadership podcast. Remember, don't just get out of the box, break the box, and set it on fire. Let's go transform something. Thank you for joining us for the Innovation Meets Leadership podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our show on iTunes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Innovation Meets Leadership. And visit our site at innovationmeetsleadership.com for more innovation resources.